Brrr, it's so cold down here in Antarctica at the McMurdo Station. We're paleoclimatologists and studying ice cores in order to learn more about Earth's history and how the climate changes over time. Ooh. As paleoclimatologists, we study ice cores, and that helps us to analyze the climate and atmospheric conditions of the past by looking at biological, physical proxies, and chemical proxies. These proxies help us to learn more about the ice cores and learn more about Earth's history by examining and analyzing specific data sets. So you may be asking, what are ice cores? Ice cores are cylinders of ice. Ice that's drilled from the ground. So there's two specific locations where you have a lot of ice cores that are drilled. And that's going to be Greenland and Antarctica, the continent down at the South Pole. So you may wonder why are those two areas specific locations for drilling ice cores? Because it's so cold. So what are ice cores made of? Shh. Ice cores are going to be made of ice, and this ice is going to form when the snow falls down onto the ground, and as that precipitation occurs, it's going to end up compacting and squishing and pressurizing over time. So all this snow that's falling up at the surface has lots of air pockets in it, and then more layers of snow and more layers of snow and more layers of snow, and all that pressure is going to smush down, and that's going to cause those air bubbles that were in those upper layers to get compressed and smushed. And so eventually, all these little air bubbles get trapped and closed off. So ice cores are going to follow the law of superposition, which we know from studying geology. That means the oldest layers are going to be at the bottom and the youngest layers are going to be at the top. So that's the same thing for ice. The snow falls, it gets deposited on the ground, and then more snow falls, and then more snow falls, and then more snow falls. So you have the oldest ice at the bottom and the youngest ice at the top. Oldest at the bottom youngest at the top. So you may be wondering, why does this ice core look different as you go down in depth? That's a great question. As ice cores are drilled with this auger, this fabulous auger that you see here, goes further down in the ground and further down in the ground and further down in the ground. So this ice core is going to have lots of different types of materials in it. So since we know that the oldest rock layers are at the bottom and the youngest are at the top, as you drill further down into the ground with your auger, then you're going to end up encountering different types of material. So you may end up hitting sediment down at the bottom. You may end up having some trapped microbial life that has been deposited over time. Or with this freshly fallen snow, you may have lots of dust that is trapped. So depending on the age of the ice, as you're going down further in the ice core, you may have different materials that you're encountering. So one thing that you may notice with looking at the ice cores is that it's going to look different for each of the layers that are deposited here. So in this ice core, you see lots of darker bands, lighter bands, darker, lighter, darker, lighter. And that's because that indicates a varve. That indicates one year, basically. So this darker layer and this lighter layer indicate one year of snow that's been deposited. So the lighter layers are going to indicate summer deposition, and the darker layers are winter deposition. So you can find air bubbles trapped in ice cores. There's some specific types of gases that are measured in the ice cores. Carbon dioxide, water vapor, oxygen. Those are your three main gases that are going to be tracked. A lot of other greenhouse gases, like there may be some methane deposits, those things you might find too. But primarily in the ice sheets that you have that are drilled um, through the ice cores, you're going to have air bubbles where scientists will analyze the carbon dioxide, oxygen, and specific amounts of isotopes in water vapor. So this is a beautiful picture here, nice and rainbow colored. So this rainbow coloration is because this sample of ice has a polarized lens that shine on it or shine through it, and that makes it refract at different wavelengths.
life. Living organisms can also be trapped in ice cores. So these remains may be present in a, a lot of different ways. So one way from these ice cores that are drilled is in this banding that represents algae. And sometimes it's kind of a slimy phytoplankton algae as well. So this layer and darker coloration indicates that there's some algae there. And here's a nice picture showing you some of this photosynthetic algae. You might also have different types of crustaceans like these ostracodes that's sort of in the shrimp family except for that doesn't look like a shrimp and then you may have uh, different types of diatoms and foraminifera so these are a couple of different unicellular or it could be multicellular but really small organisms that may have lived in the water where this particular ice sheet may have formed and then you have isotopes so we know that isotopes are going to be different forms of an element where you have the same amount of protons, but you have a different amount of neutrons. And some of those isotopes are going to be radioactive as well. So uranium is one example of an isotope that's analyzed. Also hydrogen and oxygen. So we know that hydrogen and oxygen are both in water molecules, which is why we see some different water molecules right here. So higher amounts of oxygen, the O18 isotope of oxygen, which is right here, is going to indicate higher temperatures. So as you increase in temperature on this graph, you're going to increase in the amount of O18. And that's because the O18, the oxygen 18 isotope, is heavier, so it takes higher temperatures in order for it to evaporate. So that's why we see more O18 indicative of higher temperatures. Sediment is another thing that we find in our ice cores. And you can have several different types of material that is deposited. One thing that we see in this really nice ice core is this black layer right there. What do you think that is? It's volcanic ash. So what do you think a layer that contains volcanic ash might indicate? Volcanic eruption. Also pollen, which some of you may be allergic to. You can have pollen that's trapped in ice cores too. So this is a microscopic view of some different types of pollen. And then we can also have different types of dust that gets deposited. So you may have fluctuations in dust in the atmospheric particles that are atmospheric dust that is developed or released and deposited over time. So even um, air currents can carry dust, fine particles of dust over miles and miles and hundreds of miles. So you may have dust that gets kicked up from a dust storm in one location and then gets deposited and kind of clean and carried down with the snow in Antarctica or Greenland. So what do these climate proxies tell us? What do these biological and chemical and sediment types of proxies tell us? Well, it provides us information about the past. These ice cores provide evidence for climate change, for global warming. And it tells us that the CO2 levels are going to be higher currently, are higher than any recorded level in the past 400,000 years. So based on looking at this graph, we can see the concentration of carbon dioxide. So these levels have increased over time. So beginning 1958, 2004 is the most recent data that's on this graph. And this is from the Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii. The carbon dioxide has increased increased, increased, increased. So that tells us there's some kind of increase in carbon dioxide. So what is that increase from? So that increase in carbon dioxide is going to be due to human activity. It's going to be due to primarily the burning of fossil fuels. for it. So according to the law of superposition, as we go down further into this ice, it's getting older and older and older. So those ice cores that we are uh, drilling up from the ground using augers are going to help us to learn about Earth's past and how humans have impacted the atmosphere, particularly through the increase in carbon dioxide levels. So burning of fossil fuels is causing climate change, which is also called global warming, and that's evidenced through ice cores. Thanks for joining us down here at the McMurdo Station in Antarctica. Hope you've enjoyed your trip back through the paleoclimate of the Earth.